Riker House Audio presents Maurice the Mouse, Volume 2, by Candy Riker. Read for you by Max, Liam, and Maggie Riker. Working together. Farmer Murray was so upset and angry. Mice had come into his house and chewed into packages of flour, sugar, crackers, popcorn, cereal costing him a lot of money to purchase plastic containers in an attempt to keep his food safe from the mice. Now the mice had chewed through a thick plastic container filled with oatmeal and had been chewing wrappers off other food. Farmer Murray had never had so much trouble with mice before. He was not sure what he was going to do, but something drastic had to be done to rid his home of these pests. At the same time, in Maurice's home, Father Mouse was also very upset and also frightened. He had learned about the mice who were causing Farmer Murray so much trouble, and was very afraid that Farmer Murray might do something that would not only get rid of the destructive mice, but also endanger Father Mouse's family. Maurice's family had always been respectful to Farmer Murray, his home and possessions. They did not chew into his food, only taking crumbs from the floor or cupboards. Father Mouse, Mother Mouse, and their three little mice, Maurice, Mary, and Molly, did not require large amounts of food to survive. They were careful to leave no trace of themselves in Farmer Murray's home. When Maurice, Molly, and Mary came home from school, they saw their father sitting at the table looking very worried. What's the matter, father? Father Mouse relayed his concerns to his little ones, and they too were afraid. We need to find the mice who are responsible for causing all this trouble, said Maurice. None of the families we are friends with would do such things. It was agreed that Maurice, Molly, and Mary, and their parents would check with all their friends to see what they could learn. It was discovered that a new family of mice with several children had moved close to Farmer Murray's home. Father Mouse and some of the other parents went to visit this family to determine what to do. They discovered the family had no home and were living in the field with little shelter from the weather. Father Mouse and the other parents who had visited this family came back from their visit feeling very sorry for them. They were no longer angry and upset at them and wanted to help in any way they could. First of all, Father Mouse went and spoke to the homeless family and explained how careful all of them were to not upset Farmer Murray or destroy anything in his home. Father Mouse told them he understood they were just trying to survive, but if they continued chewing into Farmer Murray's food, something would be done which would have a terrible effect on all of the mice who had been living peacefully in the neighborhood. Next, Father Mouse told the homeless family that he and the other parents were going to help them construct a safe and secure home for their family. All of the parents, children, and the new mouse family got busy and before they knew it, had a cozy little mouse house ready for the family to move into. Maurice, Molly, and Mary told the little mice and the new family about gathering clover from the fields for tea. They told the little mice about the old apple tree in Farmer Murray's yard and explained that the only time Farmer Murray used any of the apples was if his great-grandchildren came to visit. His great-grandchildren loved making homemade applesauce from the apples. Any other time, the apples were available for the little mice to take back to their new home. Father Mouse and the other parents explained how they worked together to get ears of corn from the field without being noticed. They also told the new family the neighbors down the road had a large vegetable garden every year, and often some of the produce would fall to the ground and could be taken home. The new family of mice was so grateful to all their newfound friends. Rather than shutting the new family out and trying to get them to go away, they had helped them build a home and showed them how to survive without destroying any of Farmer Murray's food. Mother Mouse is sick. Good morning, children. It's time to get up and ready for school, said Father Mouse. All three little mice got up, got dressed, and made their beds, and scampered out to the kitchen. Mother Mouse was not there. Where's Mother? asked the three little mice in unison. Mother is not feeling well today, and she is still in bed, replied Father. Eat your breakfast or you'll be late for school. I have to go out for the day, and I don't want to leave your mother alone, but I have no choice. Marie spoke up. Yes, you do, Father. All three of us will stay home from school and take care of Mother ourselves. Father wasn't so sure about that, but all three little mice insisted they could do it. What should we do to help Mother, asked Molly. Well, said Father, what do you see Mother doing around here every day? The children all shouted out things their mother did each day. Dishes, laundry, dusting, sweeping, cooking, they exclaimed. We can do those things. No one is to touch the stove except Maurice. He has used the stove before, and I know he will be very careful, said Father. 
Father hugged the little mice and set off on his day's errands. Let's do the dishes first. They all pitched in, and before they knew it, the kitchen was tidy. Mary snuck in to check on Mother, who was still sound asleep. What next? I've watched Mother do the laundry lots of times, said Molly. I know what to do. The three little mice gathered all of the dirty towels and clothes. Molly started washing and rinsing items, while the other two mice took them outside to hang on the line. Soon that chore was done. The little mice were so proud of themselves, and rightfully so. Let's get the sweeping and dusting done. We'll dust, and since you're bigger, Maurice, you sweep, said Molly and Mary. Soon they were done with all their tasks except cooking. All three little mice went to check on their mother, who was awake and wondering why they were not in school. The children told her they wanted to stay home and help take care of her. Mother Mouse decided she felt well enough to go out and sit in her favorite chair. Maurice made her a cup of red clover tea, and she sat sipping it and beaming at her children. The house looks beautiful. I can see you've all been working very hard, Mother said. We aren't done yet, exclaimed all three. We are going to make something for dinner. Are you hungry now, Mother? Mother Mouse was happy with her tea, and after she finished it, she went back to take a nap. The children got busy talking about what to do for dinner. How about a vegetable soup with some baked apples for dessert, asked Mary. All three agreed that sounded wonderful. Molly and Mary went out to see if there were any apples under Farmer Marie's old apple tree, and Mar- Maurice ran to the garden to see what he could find. The children met back in the kitchen, and the girls had found five little apples. Maurice had found a few potatoes, onions, carrots, and tomatoes. He had also gone to the field where corn was growing and found an ear of corn to bring home. The children were excited about preparing a delicious meal for both of their parents. Soon the smell of baking apples, Mary had put a little sugar and cinnamon on them, and shimmering soup filled the air. When Father Mouse arrived home from his day out, he couldn't believe all that his little mice had accomplished. Father Mouse was feeling better, and they all sat down to a delicious dinner. The three little mice agreed they were so happy to have been able to help, and doing it all together made it seem like no work at all. Mother and Father Mouse could not have been prouder. Maurice's Family Christmas Maurice, Molly, and Mary were counting down the days until Christmas. They were all so excited about the gifts they were making for others and the thoughts of gifts they might get. Maurice really wanted a sled. Molly wanted a new doll, and Mary wanted a teddy bear. Most exciting about the holidays was Mother Mouse's parents were coming to be with them. Mother was so happy. She had not seen her parents in a very long time, and they had never met Murray, Smalley, or Mary. The house was filled with excitement, preparations, and the smell of cookies Mother was baking. Father Mouse was in his workshop, secretly making surprises for his little family. The children were counting down the days until school was out for the holidays. Five more days and one week until Christmas. The little mice were very busy making and wrapping gifts. Maurice had thought and thought about gifts for his sisters, parents, and grandparents. Molly and Mary had been doing the same. They all had to be very creative since there was no money to buy gifts. The children did have access to the scraps of material, paper, paint, and wood the family had stockpiled since last Christmas. Maurice decided to make Father Mouse a sturdy sack for bringing firewood to the house. Of course, the logs he carried were mouse-sized logs. For mother, he wove a small basket for keeping nuts in the field. His sisters liked playing games, so Maurice took a little piece of wood, painted it with squares, and found several small pebbles. He painted 12 red and 12 black. He was very proud of his accomplishments. None of the children knew the grandparents and asked mother to tell them stories about what they were like when she was grown up. The children all listened intently to their mother. They learned their grandparents liked to go on walks together. It was agreed that Maurice would make them each a walking stick, and Molly and Mary would sew a little bag suitable for a picnic lunch on their walks. They were quite pleased with their decision and got to work. Molly and Mary decided to make joint gifts for their parents and Maurice, and they would make each other one gift. After much discussion, it was decided they would sew a pretty new apron for Mother. Father was more difficult, but they looked through the stockpile of found objects and decided they would knit him a warm red scarf. Molly found some pretty pink yarn and set about knitting the mittens for Mary. Mary was sitting in her room also knitting a pair of mittens for Molly. The children had all worked very hard to finish their gifts before Christmas Eve and were anxious to place their gifts under the tree. It was finally Christmas Eve. The grandparents arrived and the whole family had a wonderful feast. The little mice could hardly contain themselves. After dinner, Father brought in a little tree, and the whole family helped to 
to decorate it with popcorn, tiny pine cones the children had painted, and dried berries. Grandfather Mouse read the little mice a story of baby Jesus' birth, and then the little mice were tucked in bed. The children woke up very early Christmas morning. Mother Mouse had told them to stay in their beds until she came to get them. She did let them each have their Christmas stockings to look through. There were many treasures in each one. A peppermint candy, a tiny apple, a ribbon for each little girl mouse, a shiny marble for Maurice, and a piece of chocolate. Mother came to get the little mice as soon as all the grown-ups were awake and had a hot cup of tea. The children were amazed at the presents under the tree. They were most anxious to give everyone the gifts they had made. The parents and grandparents were amazed and pleased about the creative gifts the little mice had given them. Maurice got his wish, a sled made from a large walnut shell. He loved it and couldn't wait to go sledding with his friends. His feet would be nice and toasty in in the socks his sisters made for them. Molly got a new doll, which Mother Mouse had made lots of little outfits for. Mary got her wish, a stuffed teddy bear and a little bed for him to sleep in. After the gifts were exchanged, the family enjoyed another delicious meal. They played games, relaxed, and the whole family had a wonderful day. It was agreed by all that they were very blessed. This was the best Christmas ever!